Now, do you think the government should be able to step in and take that gun away? Well, that's part of a big debate around something called red flag gun laws. And that's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Okay, now many of you watching this video probably haven't even ever heard of red flag gun laws. I mean, to be honest, I hadn't heard of them until some student reporters from Black River Falls High School in Wisconsin pitched us this topic. They're pretty cool. More on them later. But basically, red flag laws, also known as extreme risk protection orders, or ERPOs, are laws that allow family members or police to request that courts temporarily take away a person's guns if that person is believed to be a danger to themselves or to others. And after the 2018 school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, that killed 17 people, more and more states began adopting these kinds of laws. Currently, 18 states and Washington, D.C. have them on their books. But these laws are super controversial. Opponents argue they threaten certain constitutional rights, like the right to bear arms or due process, while supporters point to their success in curbing some kinds of gun violence. So today, we're going to dig into the debate surrounding red flag gun laws. Each state that has these laws does them a little differently, but generally, it's a three-step process. Step one, if a family member or the police thinks someone might be a danger to themselves or others, they can sign an affidavit explaining why they think that person's guns should be taken away. Step two, the court can then grant a temporary removal of guns, usually ranging from two to 45 days, depending on the state. For the shorter term removal, the person in question doesn't usually get a chance to defend him or herself before the judge makes a decision. This is known as an ex parte proceeding, which is typical in cases of domestic violence and temporary restraining orders. And when it comes to the temporary removal of guns, there's usually a lower standard of evidence to prove if that person is dangerous. The thinking is, you want to remove the threat as quickly as possible to minimize damage. And then, step three. Once the guns are removed, there's a hearing that is held in front of a judge to determine if the guns can be given back, or if they should be held for longer, usually up to a year. It's typically at this hearing that the person can tell their side of the story, and the level of evidence or proof needed to keep the guns away is usually higher at this hearing compared to when the judge makes the first shorter term decision. All right, now that you kind of have a brief understanding of how these laws work, let's dive into some of the main arguments for them. We talked to Wisconsin's governor, Tony Evers, who is a supporter of these laws. Well, I think every individual in the state of Wisconsin has a right to be feel safe in their environment, whether, they're, whether it's at home or whether it's uh, at school or at work, any place. And there's good, good data out there, too. There are some states that have implemented it in the past that I have seen a reductions in in, uh, in suicides uh, via gun. It increases safety, and it's been shown shown to do that. And the majority of Americans support these laws. A 2019 American Public Media poll found that 77% of Americans supported family-initiated red flag gun laws, and 70% of Americans supported police-initiated red flag gun laws. But on the flip side, there are a lot of people who oppose these laws. One of the main arguments against them is that someone could unfairly get their guns taken away, like if a family member lies about feeling endangered. Critics are also concerned that these types of laws may violate constitutional rights to due process. Due process means the government can't take your life, liberty, or property without a fair hearing, which is written in the Fifth Amendment. Like we said earlier, a person doesn't get a chance to fully defend themselves in front of a judge until after their guns are taken away. And this is one of the main reasons why Tom Tiffany, a Republican congressman from Wisconsin, is against these laws. The students interviewed him to find out more. Tell me, why are you against red flag gun laws? By taking the guns from someone without giving a reason for doing it and then having a court or whatever official body review that, I believe that, um, I believe that that presumption of guilt turns our jurisprudence on its head, and that's not how our system works in the United States. Instead of red flag gun laws, some opponents feel like there are better ways to protect public safety. I think one of the things that's really important is that law enforcement use the tools that they have currently, use the laws that they have, because you'll see some jurisdictions around the country um, they're not using the laws that are already on the books. Let's make sure and use the laws that are currently in place before we create new laws. I'm going to give you an example, the Parkland shooter. Um, law enforcement had the ability to take him off from the streets, and they did not do it with existing laws. Why create new laws 
when you're not using the existing ones. And just to elaborate, when it comes to existing laws and the Parkland shooter, some experts say that some of the shooter's behavior should have gotten him arrested before the school shooting, which would have resulted in his guns being taken away. A lot of opponents of red flag laws, particularly in Wisconsin, feel that there should be more of an emphasis on mental health instead. I think there's other things that we should be doing as a, in particular as a state, in terms of like um, uh, better mental health counseling. In fact, Governor Evers just signed a bill expanding mental health programs in schools.